Okay, welcome to the live uh, order flow analysis, or advanced analysis here in Bookmap. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if you haven't yet, you can uh, follow us on Twitter to get up-to-date information. Uh, and then uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you haven't, and uh, you'll get updated uh, when, uh, uh, you know, there are new videos that uh, are uh, uploaded uh, to the to, to YouTube. Okay, well, let's jump in and um, get right into the order flow here. Um, let's see, earlier I was covering oil uh, because, um, uh, you know, it just uh, was, S&P is moving, so, uh, and it's kind of, kind of, looks kind of interesting here. Uh, but uh, let's uh, let's just continue on with oil. Uh, I think uh, uh, for the most part, because um, uh, you know we we covered this kind of longer term area of interest, uh, and um, uh, you know we saw that last Wednesday after the inventories, after a bullish inventory um, uh, uh, number, and uh, and yet it sold off hard, and yet. We saw the order flow on the on the much um, higher time frame. Um, we saw the absorption, okay, and it took a few days for that to turn around, but it did, uh, and um, uh, that's where uh, we you know we started to um, uh, continue to watch it and just you know I, I couldn't believe it like you know I know they were positioning themselves over here, uh, and um, uh, then. Uh, we, you know, we, we had a, a day, or sorry, it was in this area here, a 4740. Uh, and um, uh, then uh, we, we saw the uh, uh, the buying uh, step in here, and then we saw the nice move on, uh, uh, what was it, on Friday, right, uh, to the upside. Okay, we're right back down, okay? In fact, yesterday we were looking right at it. Uh, let's go to a half-hour chart. Okay. Okay, so this was the area that we were looking at in up during the webinar. We were up here and uh, looking for uh, maybe this 47.40 to you know be the the area of interest. And uh, I was I was a little surprised to see it actually go through it, uh, but it came right back up to it. Okay, so it rejected out of that area. So um, uh, you know, so this is still an important area, uh, and we can see that. Um, uh, you know, price, uh, and, and again, in this area right here, uh, we came back down, and then uh, we're right back up, uh, and we've had a couple of retests in this 47.40 area uh, as well, okay? So let's continue on, and we'll just uh, continue to look at that. Okay, and zoom out. All right. So... Okay, so you can see the move up here in oil, some uh, some basing uh, within a range, and then a break here to the upside, and um, pretty pretty uh, wicked break down uh, below uh, the uh, the structure here, and it starts to accept uh, down below it here, as you can see. Now, Homera, I hope this helps you. I mean, these are a little bit clearer lines, as you can see, uh, of some of the uh, some of the structure, like this line, especially here at 47.80. Okay, so just very simple stuff, but we can understand that there's a, there's going to be a volume cluster up here, and now there's going to be volume cluster down here, and it rejects when it comes up into this area, and it keeps on falling back down um, below 47.80. Okay, now we see a break here of that 47.80. Okay, and then uh, we see a few different uh, uh, you know uh, breaks of uh, of uh, you know some some levels here in volume all right now we just uh, saw witnessed a, a nice break down through all of those little areas we're right back down into here okay and uh, start to anticipate though and at, at this area uh, around this 66 area for responsive buyers to step in okay now this goes through uh, that educational process that uh, we have on our YouTube page okay uh, that I pointed uh, uh, Homera to um, yesterday. Let me show you where it is again today. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Okay. So 
uh, and I'll give this to you guys. Um, this is available for the advanced traders, okay? Uh, and uh, go through the uh, educational process here. Now they're about an hour long each, okay? And um, why uh, is because uh, uh, we go through the um, uh, market au or auction market theory and uh, uh, you know start to understand some of these areas uh, and. For example, why I was anticipating buyers to start to show up down here, okay? We're going to find responsive buyers, okay? We're also going to find that anyone who sold the breakdown here is going to take some profits down here, right? So in uh, looking for uh, a, a retest, and I'm still looking for it, to be honest, um, uh, to this 47.80, okay? Uh, and... Um, uh, for for a number of different reasons, uh, but um, uh, but you know this is we haven't gone up there yet, so sellers are in uh, pretty pretty strong control at the at the moment, uh, and uh, we can we're right back down into this range here, and it looks like we're break, breaking through it now. Okay, so high liquidity here. Uh, next maybe in the next stop, let's see if we get a test of uh, forty seven sixty here. Okay. Uh, good morning, Adam. Let's see. When you have uh, activating, uh, I'm sorry. Let's see here. The size numbers. I'm not sure what you mean by the size numbers, uh, Adam. Okay. All right. So let's see. Now we got. We're getting kind of a flip here. So look at. Here come the aggressive buyers. Right, boy. Let's see. This we've seen it so clear the last few days, and uh, and today I'm not quite getting a, a good reading. Um, I do see some buying coming in here, but then the nice cluster here is selling. Okay, and then again, nice little cluster starting to develop up here. Okay, so um, uh, let's see if those buyers step in again here. So we'll and then we'll finally get this uh, 47.80 tested. Okay, they're just stepping in now. Okay, so not only 80, but maybe we can even get up uh, back to uh, this uh, 47. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can get up this 47.90 now. All right. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, I would I would start to anticipate some some of the uh, uh, responsive sellers now. Okay, they're going to take some profit up here. Uh, and then uh, maybe we can get a retest back down to 80 or maybe even the 75 level, okay? Let's look at 80 first, though, because it's a nice little cluster right here, okay? You see 107 and 177. Um, where where do you see that? Now 194, okay? Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking on the jump. Oh, it, this number here, is this what you're talking about? on the jump. Oh, uh, or, or maybe in here in this, these red numbers, the 200. Okay. All right. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, now we're going to, we're going to test 4780 or I'm sorry, 48, the figure. Uh, and, um, and that's where we could not break through up here before. Okay. So, um, I'm still looking for, I mean, we might see the breakout. This might be the breakout here, but I, I know there's going to be some guys that are going to be taking profits up here. Okay, and and we'll probably see some responsive sellers up here, and this is the figure as well. Okay, so um, uh, that's uh, uh, and here we go. Okay, slight breakthrough. Let's let's see, and then let's see if we see the sellers come in. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, instead they're flipping, right? We can see them flip to the other side here. Okay, buying pressure looks pretty good. We might not get the retest. That's a lot of buying. Uh, so uh, yeah, here here we go. I think I don't think we're going to get our retest. Um, Looks like uh, we're going to continue to break up, break out to the upside here. 
Okay, now now that 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 picture is getting a little more convoluted now. I'm starting to see. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The opposite. Do we we see them here with uh, pretty high liquidity. We just need another burst here of uh, of aggressive buying. And it, there we go. Here we here we go. Let's see. If we need follow through though. Okay. And that is not the follow through we're looking for. Look at the sellers starting to come in now. Okay. So looking for now we're looking for retests. Okay, say so the order flow, see the order flow flipping over, guys. You see that? See how the, that we see the uh, the aggressor sellers uh, coming in here? Okay, so uh, based on that, well, yeah, the buyers, now the buyers just step in. Okay, so it this is this is something that, um, you know, this this is, uh, can, it can be, this can be confusing. And uh, I, so I want to, I want to cover this point here because uh, this is, this is important. Um, we want to read the, um, uh, the aggressor. Uh, we want to read the support in the book as we did in here. And, that, and I flipped um, because all of a sudden then I saw the, the, the aggressor um, starting to come in here. I'm sorry, the um, limit order book started to become aggressive on the bid. So then, then I was looking for that that continuation because a lot of buying plus the support here, and uh, and then it it did break out a little bit, but just very slightly. Okay, now where this can get tricky is in this area here. Um, the um, oh, we started to see the selling come in, right? Uh, and um, uh, the I shouldn't have jumped the gun uh, so much. Looking at this little area right here, okay, because this is where we made a swing low here, right, and uh, and we tested that area. We did not break below it though, so structure is still holding here. Okay, we're still at this 48.05 or 06 area. Okay, we want it, you know, so the buyers can step in still, uh, and uh, and really uh, lift the offer. Okay, and they did right here, but we did not break out to the upside. Okay, we got another rotation down. Okay, so um, first let's look for the structure to break. Okay, so we got that. We just got that now. Not by much though. So this can reject and come back in the middle still. Okay, we want to see a little more follow through on that. Okay, and there's still high liquidity here. I mean, there's 260 contracts here. So, you know, this can go both ways right now. Uh, and um, uh, the buyers, the aggressors can uh, can come in here, and uh, we'll see uh, maybe maybe we'll see them come up above this this area right here uh, at uh, 4809, uh, and then uh, they will uh, uh, you know lift the offer with some uh, some pretty aggressive buying. Okay, so that that's a that's a, a potential scenario here that can unfold. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, what can happen as well is these sellers here get very interested on the limit order book. Uh, we get kind of exhaustion, which is what is kind of playing out at the moment is uh, see the buying up here at this little peak. Uh, we see not not so many uh, uh, aggressive buying, uh, aggressive buyers. So therefore, uh, we can we can start to look for a retest of this uh, you know, this uh, uh, area here at uh, 48.03. Okay, we're reading, we're just putting together the pieces here now. We're doing it rather quickly. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, it, you yeah, know, maybe, maybe a bit much here, but uh, uh, it's the same, it's the same thing uh, that we'll, we'll be looking for uh, and looking for the transactions Right, and these clusters of volume, and not only these clusters, but what type of volume is it? Okay, so we can read the color and the size here, and we know that this is aggressive selling. Okay, and then putting what about the other side now up here? Look how the you know the aggressor, the buying uh, kind of uh, uh, petered out. Right, 
So uh, we have we have uh, less contracts. So we can't even get up above that area yet. Doesn't mean that uh, that scenario is finished yet. I mean, uh, we, that can we're still kind of holding structure here. Okay. Uh, so uh, that it, we can still come up here, uh, and we can see the aggressor. Um, you know the the green dots uh and have them uh, hit the um I'm sorry lift the offer very quickly uh and then maybe we'll we can test this 48 uh, 15 area here okay so so it's a it it's we're that's what we're reading here is the intent of the traders the targeted areas uh and and where they're committing themselves and what type of commitment you know, aggressive selling or aggressive buying. Okay. Um, Adam, what you're talking about is uh, the, uh, you have the advanced uh, bookmap advanced subscription. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So come up here to studies configuration, iceberg detector, and make sure that this is uh, uh, enabled here. Okay. And then uh, what version do you have? Okay, um, if you have 5.0, you probably don't have this number uh, here. Uh, if you'll need a 6.1. So log into bookmap.com and download it there. Okay, you have 6.1. All right. Um, okay, so then, uh, then you should be good. So uh, just enable it. Build 43. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, and... Um, uh, you know, just uh, uh, make sure you have that uh, enabled here and you should be good. Okay, so let's continue on with our process here. All right, so n note how we were we were reading this, okay? Uh, the, the process, although that was rather kind of fast and furious, uh, the process is still holding true, okay? Up in these little tests up here, we had very little aggressive buying. We started to note, and we noted it back here, to be honest, uh, the aggressor of the seller starting to come in. Okay. And um, uh, then we saw a little bit of a breakdown here. Okay. And but we traded right back up into the range. So it could go both ways still. Okay. Uh, now it's not looking too good. Uh, we see a nice cluster of. Um, a volume here on the sell side and this is uh, we've got a few different things to look at number one is that breakdown of the structure number two is this nice cluster of uh, aggressive selling number three is up here uh, we, we're exhausting out of buyers okay we can see the we can see them here we see the buying okay and they're not very interested number four look at the intent of the traders up here Okay, they're getting very aggressive with their uh, limit orders uh, at some of these levels. All right, so they're lowering the offer. Okay, now we don't, I mean, it's, it's true that, you know, we don't uh, know what might unfold uh, in any given moment. But putting these pieces together uh, is what we can go on. And we're looking for, due to that, looking for price discovery now to the downside. All right. By, by looking at the majority of the players uh, in, uh, in the order flow right now, uh, we can start to look for that, this kind of, uh, you know, price discovery to the downside now. Okay. And we need to, we need to judge it as well. Like for example, because of this uh, cluster, and 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 here's our our line here. We got our we got the breakdown below 48.05 or 06. Okay, we've already retested, but look at this retest here. Okay, uh, not a lot of selling. In fact, it starts to exhaust out at 48 even. Okay, what we're looking for in price discovery is we want to see it break down. And we want to see volume trading at, at these lower levels, okay? Uh, so um, uh, to me, it looks like we're just kind of range bound now at between 48.05 and 48.
So, uh, yeah, any any questions? You know, go, you know, I can go through slower uh, with some of the details here, uh, but uh, this is looking good. Now we're seeing more volume trade at this lower low, okay? And now we're breaking down. See the price discovery like I'm talking about, all right? There we go. Nice little breakdown there, okay? We were looking for that up here, okay? And we were looking at it, uh, and we acknowledge that anything can happen, but based on what we know and the commitment of traders here, and we, we noticed it back over here, okay? And then the little breakdowns here in these areas, but we still weren't quite sure but this is this was starting to give us some good insight and I'll just I'll just go through it again so this is what to look for and then the, you can start to anticipate this kind of activity or this price action to the downside okay so again uh, we noticed over here more selling starting to come in okay then we noticed in this area here we couldn't even get back up to the test the highs and we saw a very uh, dismal uh, aggressive buying in these areas. In fact, we're exhausting out basically. Okay. And then more sellers at kind of the lower areas. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we break the structure here. And then we note also in the limit order book how they're getting aggressive and lowering the offer with size. And they're staying in the book. Okay. And uh, start to anticipate that move to the downside. Okay, so now I'm, I'm, what I want to cover uh, is the um, understanding the, uh, the order flow here uh, and the limit order book and putting these pieces together as the majority of, uh, you know, uh, that, that gives us the insight here. And why I'm going to cover it this way is because a lot of us are very familiar with uh, volume profile uh, trading and market profile. So for example, here's your profile. Okay. And we're just going to cover volume right now. All right. And we can see nice little profile up here. Okay. And then there's a very nice low volume node here at 48. Okay. Most, um, uh, most volume uh, profile traders uh, know that uh, the market does not like trading here at 48. Okay, because there's not a lot of trading activity. That's the majority of traders here. That's the point I want to get across. We don't know what's going to happen here. They might flip and it might it might go to the upside. But for the most part, if we have a nice move down and we have commitment and price discovery to the downside here, the majority of traders are not interested uh, in buying uh, up at this area. It's going to exhaust out. Okay. And that's what happened in this case. We got a, a, a beautiful pullback here, okay, right to where we broke from, right? And uh, and look at the price discovery to the downside now. Okay. So uh, putting all of these pieces together, and it's, it you know, it's the, it we, you know, someone can flip and someone might, some big player, uh, you know, might do something very, very aggressive, but putting all these pieces together, we have, we have a pretty good probability and knowledge of the commitment of these traders and their intent as well in the limit order book. We can read their intent and we can put the pieces together and, uh, and we can look for moves like this. All right. All right. So, yeah, ask questions. Uh, any, anything about that? I'm happy, happy to cover it. Uh, but uh, you know, just I'm trying to make it um, simple and uh, uh, just go through steps of what to look for and what to read, uh, and then uh, and then make a, a very, very uh, kind of deductive argument. And so it's a very objective decision, trading decision, based on the information that we have here, and then start to look for. Uh, these types of moves start to anticipate them and and set yourself up for them. Okay. 
All right, a few questions here. Uh, could it be possible to add volume profile inside bookmap? Yeah, you're looking at it right now. Um, uh, here are your volume profiles. In fact, uh, uh, market maker, uh, uh, let's see, I think you're, you're new to, uh, to bookmap, so uh, let, me, let me cover a few of these different things. Um, the, I'll quickly go through it, the columns, okay? So we have COB here, right? This is your uh, uh, current order book. This is your dome. Uh, in book map and um, the um, uh, and you can see the levels All right, can you hear me now? How's that? Good, okay, all right, good. All right, sorry about that. I'm not I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Um, I guess it just uh, kind of got partially disconnected. Um, Okay, uh, so let me, I'll go through these. Th these, these are important questions. Um, so, uh, and, and, you know, uh, if you guys that are in trial and, and you wanna understand how to start to integrate um, volume profile and auction market theory uh, within the order flow here in Bookmap. Okay, because um, uh, it's um, uh, I mean they're kind of two different beasts, but we, we're going to use the same process to put it together, and that's what I want was trying to cover here. Um, so, um, and I'll just quickly go through some of the columns, right? Uh, that uh, that you're looking at. So you've got many different data columns here. We've got our current order book, uh, and this is a volume profile column here, and this is a volume profile column for the volume that is displayed within this chart range. So if I just use my center mouse wheel and zoom in quickly, note how this CVP volume profile changes, okay? All right, and then if I zoom out, it, it changes yet again. Okay, so it's only for the volume here, which is a nice thing to see because we have another volume profile here, the SVP. This is for the session range volume profile. This is for all of the volume since when I opened up Bookmap and started collecting data. So what you can do is you can you can start to um, uh, understand how to play off of the two different uh, profiles here. Like we saw the uh, low volume node up here. Well, do we have a low volume node also in our session range volume profile? And yeah, we kind of do. Um, it's actually uh, not so clear in the session range volume profile, uh, but uh, it's definitely lower here than the other areas around it. So maybe this is pretty strong area for you then if you're a volume profile trader. Okay, look for this nice little pullback here. It's a beautiful, this is a beautiful setup right here. Uh, we broke structure. Okay, and uh, and we came back up, and we actually didn't quite test where we broke from, but we're just one tick away, and it tested here a few times. Okay, now again, this this setup here, and this is a, this is a good one. I might may even have to use it for the next time we do this. Um, is uh, uh, covered uh, in part three of our educational course, so you might want to go back and review that, uh, and. Uh, uh, because, you know, you can set some of your limit orders up in this area here, but you might not get filled. So this, we're talking about, you know, not just a setup, but also optimizing your uh, entries and exits here. Uh, you, you might want to uh, uh, look for, um, you know, maybe place a, um, uh, a limit uh, order up here, but uh, maybe a few ticks below. Your, your, your percentage for getting filled are going to be much higher, okay? Uh, yes, if it comes up and tests here or even tests a little higher up into the POC of this area here, uh, you're going to take some heat, but at least you're going to be in the market looking for that high probability trade to the downside. All right. 
So all sorts of different ways. Um, and then getting back uh, to your uh, your question there, market maker, the um, uh, so, we, yes, we have all sorts of different uh, profiles here to, to take a look at. You can also right-click in here. You can format the column. You can split out the data, and we can also look at it this way here, okay? The aggressor, who's winning? Like, you know, uh, you, you look at it, uh, the offer or the bid versus the offer, okay? So a diagonally to find out, like, you know, uh, where the pressure really is. Okay. There's all sorts of ways of resetting this data here too. So just right click and you can reset uh, and then we can um, make, you know, conditional resets to schedule it every hour or minute or every day at like 930, you know, cash open or an oil nine o'clock, um, et cetera. There's all sorts of ways. Um, and, um, uh, and then there's, there's other types of data. Uh, there's not only volume. Okay. There's a trades counter, so it's like volume. In fact, the profiles are very similar, except they're trade events. Okay, it's not um, the uh, uh, number of contracts; it's the number of trade events. Okay, so let's say someone traded once for 10 contracts. Well, you would see in this in this volume pro or this trades counter profile, you would just see the number one instead of 10. The volume profile, you'd see 10. There's also a quotes counter, the number of quotes refreshed. And why we show this kind of data is because in the high frequency environment, um, they'll, uh, uh, we're looking for areas of activity, not just volume. Okay. And uh, the intent and possibility to trade in these areas is important. Okay. So let me see. I hope that answers your question, uh, market maker. Um, uh, no, for higher, uh, we also have the VWAP here. You can see the VWAP line, this little white line, okay? So just right-click, format, and then you see the VWAP line right here, okay? Let me put that together back in a profile, okay? Uh, but for day, week, et cetera, no, we don't have that because we're, we only have the data for the day or since when we opened up Bookmap, I should say. Some people open it up on Sunday evening and let it run the entire week, okay? Okay. Um, and um, what you can do, though, is uh, you can you can add a custom notes column here, okay? And uh, in the in your notes column, let's say the VWAP is uh, at 47.95, uh, just type in uh, you know uh, weekly VWAP, okay? And you can style it, etc. And there it is. Okay. You can also put uh, you can click on notifications up here and enable an alert uh, to, uh, uh, you know, alert you uh, when uh, you come up to that area and, um, and it tests it or even test before it. You can see, you can, you can kind of um, uh, get in front of it and offset the alert. All right. And okay, let me get, hide that column. Uh, let's see, kind of got a flurry of questions here. So let me, uh, let me go through it. Okay. So this move is, we're right back. Let me, let me cover a little bit of the order flow first, and then I'll get into the questions because it looks like uh, we're starting to get into high volume again uh, after our break and move to the downside. Okay, we're down here again uh, where we, uh, not only where we broke from here, as you can see, uh, we're down kind of into kind of the main volume profile and cluster uh, in this area here. And you can see uh, there's them starting to get interested on the, on the bid here at 47.65. Okay, so just below the swing here is where they are. And then 4760 is also, that's the highest area in the book right now, as you can see. Okay, so they want to absorb down here. They want to be buyers down here. That much we know. All right, so let me continue on uh, and uh, answer some of these questions. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not not familiar with um, um, too familiar with uh, Sierra charts. Um, so, um, you know, looking at uh, uh, your volume and market profile, uh, this is the way we have it set up in uh, in Bookmap. All right. Okay. Um, other uh, okay, uh, uh, Gabrielle, there is no um, uh, value value area high, value area low. Um, um, or VPOC, all right? 
I mean, uh, the uh, the way that I, I've been um, covering the um, uh, the POC uh, is just by looking at the profile, and I know that you know, obviously, this is going to be the POC, right? And this is going to be the POC up here, which is actually almost where we tested to. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, Gabriel, your your comment there is um, uh, well taken. I will um, uh, add that to. It's already been. Um, requested. I'm going to re-request again um, because uh, I know you guys are interested in that, seeing the value area high, value, value area lows of some of these areas. All right. Uh, let's see. Market makers, possible display, the open, the close of yesterday. Uh, you, you will do that through the notes column. Okay. That's the way you'll do it. Now, there's something interesting about the notes column as well um, that um, I want to cover. Uh, and that is because uh, I think we're going to kind of slow down here, to be honest. But um, uh, in, anyway, um, uh, go to right click in a column and let's insert a new column. Right. And then we'll right click in that column here. And then I'm going to uh, select notes and not custom notes, but cloud notes. OK. Um, and I may have. Does anyone have the uh, link uh, for FT, FT71? If you can just uh, put that into the uh, the questions, and then I can demo the um, uh, the cloud notes and how they work. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. So the cloud notes is interesting uh, uh, product here or uh, feature. What you're able to do is just uh, on the cloud, uh, you can have your um, uh, Excel spreadsheet, um, and you can have book. You can make the changes on the fly uh, on that Excel spreadsheet, and it will update automatically within the cloud notes column here in Bookmap. As you can see, I've got it. Uh, the download inter interval here set for five minutes. You can make it one minute if you want. Okay, and uh, it will go ping that um, uh, that document and then reflect the changes in the uh, cloud notes column. All right, or you can just very simply um, that way you can keep a master copy. That's the the idea. But the uh, uh, if you don't want to do that, then um, what you can do is um, just use the regular notes column and um, uh, you know just uh, uh, update it uh, that way. Okay. So what you can do is you can, and it's it's you know it's it's really not going to be. I mean, you don't have to use the uh, the cloud notes. Um, it, it's a really nice feature, uh, uh, but uh, all you'd have to do here is if you wanted uh, to update your notes column in, in your from your Excel spreadsheet, is just import. Okay, just just uh, and choose choose import notes here, uh, and then it's going to ask you to find uh, your your uh, uh, your uh, uh, what is it? Not, not Excel. It's um, a comma uh, separated values file and then um, and then just import it and all your notes will come right in automatically. OK. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. OK, cool. So uh, I'll demo this for you guys uh, with the uh, cloud notes. And input the URL here. OK, come on. Hmm. Okay, I, I'm not sure if I'm using the correct link. Huh. Okay. Drop down to down the book map. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me try that. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Okay. So here, here's how um, a one professional trader uses his cloud notes. Okay. So he's got, he's got a, his own um, uh, abbreviations, et cetera. Um, so market maker, this is what you'd do. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, you just uh, import that data or uh, uh, have the uh, cloud note updated automatically. All right. 
Okay, and uh, I can uh, zoom vertically here. I can just left click, hold, and drag up and down. And you can see it's pretty extensive uh, uh, notes column here. Okay, there's lots of stuff going on. Okay, and uh, when and you can have alerts set up for it as well. Okay. Uh, market maker uh, to show the precise order. Absolutely, um, the the uh, volume, etc. So the the way you would do that. Let's zoom into an area here. Okay, and um, so and uh, your your point here um, is. Um, well taken. Let me go back to splitting and inversing. There we go. All right. Uh, to a lot of traders, they, it, you know, it's good to see the um, the volume dots here, and you understand, like, like for example, here is it's all green, and we know that that's going to be all aggressive buying. Okay. Uh, and you can see them lift the offer in this area here. But you want to know maybe the a uh, uh, little more data than that, a little more insight. Well, what you can do is you can just use the, uh, the show data tip tool here. And uh, you can hover over that specific um, dot there, and it tells you the volume. Okay, so this dot right here was for a volume of uh, 278 contracts. Okay, and then you see the price there, 47.75 uh seven seven five seven why we give that information is because that's the overall vwap of that of those 278 contracts so for example if i continue to zoom in here like note how we're breaking apart all of that trade data right and uh, now we have a, a much better insight of exactly what occurred here okay so um in fact this break this is going to break down as well Okay, so we're recording every single event. Look at that cluster and look at that uh, uh, algorithmic activity right here of aggressive buying. Okay, and there's an iceberg order right on the other side. Okay, that's what this iceberg detector is we see with the red number is on the other side of this. They're not showing in the limit order book. They are absorbing. They are absorbing uh, the, these aggressive buyers trying to lift the offer. Okay, and there these these larger players using the iceberg order or hidden order type, uh, they're going to be um, uh, positioning themselves short in this area. Okay, so again, like uh, just use the rollover tool, and uh, you can see it that way. Uh, you can also see it another way, um, and that is uh, by um, looking at your columns data here and getting it within your uh, your chart range. All right, so. Um, so, for example, all of this uh, volume activity here, or let's just go through maybe uh, up here, okay? We'll just zoom in, right? And then here, here's what really occurred, okay? We, we can see in this area here what really occurred. And, in fact, you can see the overall pro profile here. Or we can split it out, okay? So we split out that data. Uh, these were the number of aggressive buys versus the number of aggressive sells here, okay? Hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, spoofing is forbidden. Yeah, uh, it's not to say that, uh, you know, you still don't see that type of activity, though, at all. And we see it here, you know, all the time. Okay. Okay. Well, it has to be proven. That, that's the interesting point here. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it, it's software like this, to be honest, that is uh, uh, allowing uh, SEC or uh, CFTC, uh, NFA to look into that and to prove it. I mean, you need to look for, I mean, like this is, this could be considered pretty classic spoofing type of activity on uh, some of these areas here, very high liquidity without the intent to trade. But how do you prove the intent to trade, right? And uh, do do we know it, it was this player related to these players down here? Okay, we don't we don't really know that. They, you have to link up accounts, uh, and um, uh, you know really uh, uh, you know get into some of the details. Well, that, I mean that's that's what uh, you know they're they're really. If if you can prove the intent to trade, then uh, then you've got them, right? All 
Oh, of course. Yeah, they're, I mean, uh, they're adding and pulling and, and a lot of the liquidity is uh, uh, fictitious uh, all the time. But again, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about all of that. It's it's more about what we did up here. Okay, putting those pieces together in the in kind of the bigger picture of the order flow. Okay, that led that led to kind of you know pretty nice result here, uh, and it was you know we 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 acknowledge the risk as well. And we, we acknowledge that, uh, you know, kind of using the, you know, uh, auction uh, market theory as well as volume profile uh, to understand kind of the majority of the intent of these traders. They, this looks like a lot more interest here. This doesn't look like kind of spoofing activity. Okay. This, these guys, they look like they're interested to trade too. And they did for the most part. You know, we can see the cluster of, uh, of volume that, that traded down here. Okay. And we can see here. Uh, that uh, we start to trade into it and okay some pulls uh, but uh, you know some of it remains as well okay and um, so you know we're, we're getting that kind of overall picture right so yeah you know I mean they're they're still they're still here uh, but then some a lot of it pulled too okay and then what we want to measure or to understand for the intent is if they're pulling where are they adding it Okay. They're down a little lower. This also is another clue here, and this is just a very, very um, objective information. If if they're not interested here and they're interested a little lower, that's kind of bearish activity, right? And uh, and we can read it. It's here. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> what is a mafia? This is insane. Um, is it possible to have very quick view of activity of market order in a specific price area with a sort of zoom feature back and forth? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, uh, but um, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if you want to you know, you really look at very, very low time frames. You can here. Okay, you can zoom in, uh, like uh, you know, zooming into. Um, oh, zoom in out very quickly. Okay, all right. Let's go. Let's go to this 4780 right here. Okay, click on the hand tool, hover over this dot, use your center mouse wheel, re reposition it, uh, zoom in again. Okay, let's look at some of these trades up here. Okay, I'm just, I just keep keep scrolling in. All right, we are down at microsecond level pretty quickly. And here's what we only see three trades that took place. Okay, for a volume of three. So that's got to be volume of one each. All right, if we hover over that dot, it says volume of one, volume of one, volume of one. There you go. And when I want to zoom back out, there you go. Is that is that the kind of zoom that you're looking for. I mean, I, I zoom in and out very quickly all the time. Uh, I, I find it very helpful. I think that's what you're alluding to. Uh, I find it very, 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 <laughs> very helpful because uh, now we we can really um, very objectively look at it and see like, uh, you know, the commitment and um, uh, who's doing what, uh, but then zoom back out and look at the bigger picture. Uh, and uh, and it doesn't take much time at all, uh, and then um, um, we can come right back to the current market. Okay, just make sure that um, uh, once you zoom in with the when you have that hand tool or that move tool on, uh, and then uh, just uh, you'll have to click back on it to come back to the current market. Okay, and then we'll have to zoom out a little bit here. All right. Okay. All right, guys. Well, we've been going for about uh, 50 minutes or so because I started a little bit late, uh, and um, covering, uh, going through some of the you know um, software uh, uh, features and uh, um, components, but uh, looking at the order flow in the in the same time, and uh, how to use the tool together with uh, with understanding the order flow, uh, and uh, also the yeah, the anticipation in this area here was for some sideways action uh, due to the, uh, you know, responsive buyers down here. And we saw that uh, 
a lot of volume starting to trade into this kind of volume area where we were before, right? So I'm kind of looking for it to bounce back and forth here until we'll, we'll see something shift, um, but uh, we haven't seen it yet, you know? So we, we've been trading between this range here of uh, about uh, 68 and, uh, and 80. We're basically 68 and 78, to be honest, more majority of the trades here. So, all right. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, we will, uh, we'll call it a day and then, uh, tomorrow will be our, our last day for, uh, uh, until after Labor Day. Okay. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, ask any questions in support, uh, happy to go, go through and, um, uh, answer your questions and, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever it takes uh, for you guys to uh, uh, start to uh, comprehend this tool, uh, how to use it, and then how to very objectively read it uh, like we are in these webinars so that uh, uh, you can look for some really nice high probability trades. Uh, yeah, Bookmap um, works for Ninja um, as well as a standalone um, product. You can do both. Whatever, whatever you prefer. I mean, you can only have one instance of Bookmap open, but you can um, uh, use it for both. Okay. Um, that said, uh, I, I just want to mention that it is uh, better uh, to not go through the API of a uh, another platform. It is better to connect directly to the data. Okay. So. Um, for example, uh, uh, if you connect with Rhythmic, uh, your Ninja Trader platform, well, it, uh, Rhythmic offers two simultaneous platform connections with their data feed. So you can use um, Rhythmic for your um, uh, for your Ninja, or if it's Sierra Charts, that's fine too. But then you can also use that second feed for Bookmap, and you'll get uh, much cleaner data. Well, not much cleaner. I shouldn't say that. Um, it it just when it goes through the API of a platform, uh, it is um, uh, you know you're going to get uh, maybe just slight latency, uh, and then also if the uh, if the data is uh, processed somehow by the API of that platform, it's going to come into Bookmap a little differently. That's that's all. Okay. Now, if you're, you know, trading zoomed out, it's not going to be that big of a deal at all. Uh, but uh, there's been times where, you know, we can uh, we can zoom into um, some specific um, uh, data feeds and we can see, uh, you know, s just small distinctions, right? But uh, for a lot of you, that that might might, might be really big, or or maybe for a lot of you, it, it might not. I mean, I you know, if I d I don't know what time frame you guys are are trading on. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, let's see here. I think that's uh, that's all the questions. All right. Well, let's wrap it up, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye bye.